Hi, everyone. This is Karen Newman, and we are live. This is the Hucolo Saturday webinar with Jim Charles, and it is Saturday, the 9th of September, 2017. Who do we have in the room with you there, Jim? I have so far mm -hmm. Angie, John, Barbara, and a new John in the back here. <laughs> and I have, uh, oh, this guy here. Will. <laughs> yes, Bob. Bob, Bob, no. <laughs> and I have Raymond over here. Perfect. And we're expecting James Shahid to come. So okay, in our room we and have Angie, we have Christine, we have Damien, Don, uh, Eva, Ian, Liney, Mark, Marlene, Octavian, Omran, Sheer, Stephanie, Temple, and then myself, Karen. So. One, welcome everybody here and there. So love to see you. Um, does anybody have a blessing or oh, do you have any announcements first? Well, I know that you all have an announcement with the success of your past retreat. You will have in Sedona, coming up in Sedona in February, you will have another retreat. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, so far, uh, it's going to be the first through the fifth or sixth. First through the fifth. And... Um, it's going to be in Sedona. We uh, Max has already secured the place, and we already have plane tickets to awesome. go there already. So we're just I'm I think the price is going to be five twenty five. It's not going to include all the meals this time, but it will include breakfast, I think. But there's more information to come. So far, this is he is still planning uh, some of the stuff and. Uh, the 525 will include your uh, uh, where you're going to be staying and the teaching. So <laughs> other than that and breakfast. So other than that, I'm not sure what's going on other than that at the moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, more news will be coming out about that shortly, I'm sure. Right, and you can check that out on the Hucolo.org website. And if you would like to become a member of Hucolo, this is a paid webinar. So for $10 a month, you have access to all of the paid webinars that are done by Jim and then some of the, some of the other amazing classes that we have. So check it out on Hucolo.org. And 525 yes. is the name of the facility? Excuse me? Um, F525 is the name of the facility? No, five twenty-five is the price. Oh, so the, the, oh five twenty-five is the yeah. price for the trip for the um, the workshop. Right. Also, you can watch it on for free on YouTube. Uh, after this is done, it, the um, this goes to YouTube. The reason why some people want to pay the ten dollars is so that they can ask questions up front, and so to be a participant. And that's what the ten dollars is for. A lot of people wanted to participate, and they couldn't get online, so they did. We decided to have them pay ten dollars so that they right cool. in the webinar if they have questions. And other people just like to listen. Right. So yeah, the ten dollars a month guarantees you a spot in the room, and you can always ask your questions live in the webinar. So. Nice. It's a good thing. Now we get to see Jim stand up. <laughs> I believe James has arrived, I think. Oh, um, that's okay. I wanted to introduce you to Angie. Hi, nice to meet you. This is James. This is John. This is Barbara. And you know John. <laughs> this is Will and that's Ray. Hi, how are you? Okay, well, welcome James in the room. Yes, yeah, so we have a nice group today. So, Is there anyone that wanted to do an opening uh, blessing to start? Anyone doing a blessing? Yes. Oh, Ray okay. wants to do one. Perfect. Great, Ray. Hold on. Is everyone ready? Okay, good. May the light of creation guide to your path and may you see the ever-changing world around you amen okay amen Any, anybody else has a blessing I'll do one. all right barb 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try a different thing. Okay. It is all about change and that change will always occur. The laws of the universe stay the same because we must exist in a structure. However, outside the structure, there are many changes and things will always be different so that you may experience life and the universe in many different ways. Feel free to create your own universe inside so that you may understand it with your own theories and thoughts. Make sure that you are be being true to yourself and not hurting others. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Oh, real, Will has a blessing. Will has a blessing. Awesome. Artikia ta aur to na aur sahaya ta akatiji sawa ta arna aur to kushi na aur sihi kena wa ta arshina unko hua ta sa ikena wa arshina wa ta arhihi ka wa ta shikaya ta arna aye sahauta chishishi ni ta arna wa ya ka arnihi ta kushu hua. The energy of the universe has always been, and so therefore God has always been and is encompassing all things with his fire of understanding and unity, love and compassion. Let him in, cleanse out all other things, and you will know the truth about the world that you live in and the life that you are to live and the path that is brightly lit before you. Beautiful. And, and can I just ask uh, also that we send some really, really good, strong energy to Florida? Yes. So, so send, sending energies to so many places right now, to Austin, Texas, to yeah. Florida, to the places that are experiencing great, um, a lot of uh, earthquakes, and uh, that is pretty much all over the world is doing, the earthquakes are really ramping up in many places mm -hmm. so send energy to mother gaia she needs reinforcement right now plus the alignment of planets that's coming will bring a great amount of uh, gravity to the planet and and uh, probably pull the uh coronal mass ejections even a little closer so pray about all those things not in a not that we are in any danger but we just want to keep everything aside, keep everything as positive as pos possible, and bring love to the situation and to Mother Earth. So bring all the positivity you can to Earth at this time. There's many things that are happening. So and also our political world. Pray for our politicians. Yeah. There are many reasons to pray for them, of course. So uh thank you for listening to that <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you very much all right we're ready when you're ready and uh yeah always okay very good always a pleasure to uh see whoever comes through so we're very excited very good oh i wanted to say uh congratulations karen for making the channel panel oh thank That's you very much thing. thank you yeah, it's a beautiful thing it thank will be you. on the west coast oh. this year yeah so a beautiful it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All right, one moment and I will be back. Anyone have any comments before I start? Very good.
Greetings, I am Elijah. I hope all is well with all of you today. I've come here to speak very specifically today about light languages. Oh, perfect. Welcome, Elijah. Thank you for coming. Many of you have light languages or galactic languages or languages that you do not know what they are necessarily. But sometimes they bubble up within you and speak sometimes for you. Allow these to happen in a great positivity. Why? Because they are telling and praying for you in ways that you cannot pray for yourself. They are bringing positivity into your life that you do not even know how to pray for. They are bringing the law of attraction to you. They are bringing the needs of your missions to you. They are bringing the love of unconditional God to you so that you may be unconditional in your love as well. Remember, some of you do not have light languages, but that is all right. Set your mind in a state of prayer for all times. You can pray no matter where you are or what you're doing. You can throw, shoot up a thanksgiving or a prayer or a thought of positivity no matter what you are doing. And this may bring a light language to you eventually. But those of you that do have a light language, use them in such a positive way to encourage your own being and encourage others around you to rise up. Now, light languages are of unconditional love. They are brought to you in a way that is unconditional. You do not have to be a certain way, a certain kind of being, or have certain properties in your being, except for great belief in God, to accept these things. Unconditional love, as we spoke of many times, is not an event. It is not a single act. It is not one thing here or one thing there. But unconditional love is a way of life. Unconditional love is how you act at all times. If you are not cleared and clarified and do not have the love in you, then you will show that you do not have it and others will see it that you do not have it. Not that they are looking for unconditional love in you, but they are looking for the example of who you are. And if you are an example of unconditional love, it will be noted that there is something different about you that does not fit into the norm because unconditional love is not normal. Many are angered. Many feel stress and negativities. And as soon as they do, they start to change in their outlooks. They start to change in the way they act and the way they speak. But when these things happen to you, you should cleanse out and bring in that which is of God. Now, to say that is to say this. You are forgiving everyone around you. You have nothing against anyone, because if you do, then you're not being unconditional. You are blaming, you are pointing, you are judging, you are not looking at the love within them, and you are not looking at what is unconditional love. You are being selfish about what is there. You are hurt, or you are damaged, or you are, you are, you are, you are. Remember, unconditional love is they are. Give to them. Love them. Love yourself and let it out. Let that love within you come out so that it is for them. And for yourself, 
Because when you love someone else or all those that are around you, you are aware of your own self-love. And you are aware of what it is doing for the world. But it is not something that will make your head swell or make you arrogant, but just the opposite. It will humble you and let you realize what God really wants for the world and what for God really wants for humankind. He wants the beauty of selflessness, the beauty of giving, understanding and compassion, wisdom, light. So back to the light languages. I'm almost done. <laughs> Use your light languages to benefit yourself. When you don't know how to pray or don't know what is wrong, use your light languages if you have them to speak for you, to pray for you, to love for you, to open you to a new perception of what is happening at that moment. Use your light language in the intention of edification and uplifting for giving love, for forgiveness, for kindness and compassion, for wisdom, for the good example that you can be, for the mission that is yours. Use these light languages in so many ways, but this is one that will edify you the most because God knows and those around you can see who you are and they will be able to pray for you and give you what you need the most, even if you don't know. Much love to you. Much love to you. Thank you, Elijah. Is there yes, we do have some questions. Uh, Eva has right. a question, Others? and then Christine. Yes, go ahead. Eva. Yes, hi. I have actually two hopefully short questions. One is, um, it's kind of important for me, so sorry, it's not a general for everybody question. Uh, I'm trying to um, sell or rent a house and I'm putting for somebody and I'm putting enormous amount of time and work into it and it's nothing happening, which is very unusual. So. I, I'd like to ask what's going on with this. And my other question is, I just moved into a new place and there is something not right happening in the apartment above me, which worries me. And I'd like to know if there is some kind of abuse going on there or the opposite, because you know, you never know. Thank you so much. The answer to this will benefit everyone because everyone has certain situations like this in their lives where there's discontent around them, where there's things that they are not happening and they're wondering why, because they have dedicated much time and energy to these things. Remember this, you do create your own reality in many senses, but God also has a part of that in store. He knows the right timing. He knows the right sequence of things to happen for you to have the best outcome, for all of you to have the best outcome. Now, it may seem like you're putting a lot of effort into something that is not happening, and do not doubt or do not be afraid that there is something going to happen. And with this situation with the neighbors, something not quite right, it could be that you hear a lot of discomfort or arguing or noise or whatever it is that is not right in this area. You must pray in a positive manner for this to change because there is no way for you to go talk to them and have it change. There is no way for you to uh, stop them 
in any way because they have free will. But when you pray, when you bring the Spirit of God into your life frame and into your place of residence, you are affected. And you can take that and add them to your prayers, add their space to your prayer list, add their space to your prayer list, and add those individuals to your prayer list. It's not that you're just sitting there going, oh, I wish they would stop, but you have to do something energetically about it. And it's that way with all things. You, you cannot just wish it away. You can pray it away. You can love it away. You can do many things that are positive to affect it, but there may be a lesson for you to learn also. There may be something there that is teaching you about something within yourself. Are they bringing out a negativity within you? Are they making you feel a certain way? Are they bringing anger to your life? Perhaps God wants you to cleanse yourself out first and bring yourself into a positive and beautiful frame before you can even begin to start to change the energy in other places. But I do not know the situation, but I do know this. All people can learn from those kinds of situations. And if I were to ask, there's many of you that have similar situations where there's someone outside of their family or even within their family that is causing them to feel certain ways and they need to cleanse that and love these people no matter what they're doing. They don't have to accept that negativity into their lives. They can bring up the positive, bring down the love of God and push out love and not bring in negativity. I know that that doesn't completely answer your question because you would like a more immediate answer but you know God has lessons for us to learn and some of us and some of us do not learn immediately about these things. You have to experience some things before you can move forward. You gave me a better, me a better answer, answer than I expected. So thank you so much. I'm actually loving your answer. Very good. Thank you. And I love you as well. Oh, thank you. Love you. Okay, Christine has a question. Greetings and blessings. Um, Greetings. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if um, I'm getting these strange um, noises or sounds around me, like um, uh, I heard a dog barking near my ear and I'll look around and it's not my dogs. They're not my dogs. And then last night when I was sleeping, I heard a dog bark right in my ear. And um, I looked at my two dogs and they're both sound asleep. So um, what is this dog barking about? Could, could you okay, tell me? Okay, let me tell you this. I do not know the okay. message that the dog is trying to give you, but send a blessing to these dogs that you are hearing. You are an animal healer. This is a spirit of an animal that needs healing. Okay. Send blessings and healing to it. Okay. You are one that blesses the animals and make them calm. You make them heal. You make them greater than they once were. Your energies heal Mother Earth as well. Because when you heal the animals, you heal part of Mother Earth because she protects the animals. And I just wanted you to know that that animal that you are hearing needs your healing touch, your blessing on this animal. That is why they are there. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And then uh, Stephanie has a question, please. Three.
You'll have to unmute yourself. Step, step Perhaps, oh, uh, there you go. There she is. Hi, I had lost connection. I had to reconnect quickly. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> Could you speak up a bit? Um, can you hear me now? Test one, two. One, two. Uh, speak in a loud better. voice, hon. We can barely hear you. Is that better now? Yes, is that, better? that is better. Okay, wonderful. Morning and blessings to you, Elijah. Good morning. Thank you. I was wondering if there is a, what the differences and or likenesses be, are between light language and galactic language. Ah, beautiful question. And I would love to answer that. Light languages are from the spirit and that is beautiful. And very helpful. The galactic, lang galactic languages are usually from your galactic families. They're usually from those around you that care for you a great deal. And let me tell you the difference. There's very little, actually. Because those that have taken on the responsibility of helping you, no matter if they're in the light, in the spirit, or if they're in the galactic world, they are looking out for you and will help you through situations. Now, in order to use the galactic language properly, remember to bring God into it because God is a part of these galactic beings' life as well. But before you even speak the language of light language or galactic language, bring in the God element. Bring in the love of God and the information of God and say, let me use this properly and let the best messages and the best use of this language come about. And then it will give you messages. You may not even understand them. Your subconscious will. It will give you messages of uplifting and a greater understanding and build you up and you will feel better. You will actually feel the essence of this love that is being brought to you. And I know that you are praying about certain situations, the love of family, the love of those that you feel that are disconnecting, those that are falling away. Do not worry, my dear. Love brings people back Love understands, but God may have to bring them low before they come back because there are lessons to learn. And sometimes lessons are not easy. But he does love all those around you and you deeply, deeply, deeply loves you. And so use your galactic language and use it in your spiritual languages in a way that is beneficial to not only yourself but those around you thank you so much i have a follow-up question if that's okay continue when you are in the midst of speaking the language are you able to tell whether it's galactic or light language by the feeling that you have or well, if God is involved in it, you may feel the same if it is spirit or galactic. But I think that intellectually, you will know the difference. You will know if it's coming from spirit, if you will know if it's coming from galactic. Intellectually, your subconscious and your being knows where it's coming from and why it's coming from that direction in some ways. You may not understand it completely, but I think that they will give you an indicator of who they are and why they're sending this language to you. Wonderful. Sometimes I can interpret it and it's like I'm speaking uh, broken English and a light language. And other times it's just, I believe, to be galactic languages and they are varied, quite frankly. Exactly. There are more than one person out there that cares about you. And many people uh, are the same. There, are, I, If I were to ask how many people in this room speak galactic languages, I know that there are several. There are some that do not speak galactic languages, 
but it is not that they can't, but it is just not a part of them at this time, and perhaps they don't want to at this time. Perhaps it's not something that's necessary for them. But prayer is necessary for all beings. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, there's a question from within the chat, if I can ask that. Um, yes. Okay. Um, Stephanie, if you can mute yourself, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, it's from Trinity. She has two questions. She says, please ask Elijah if he has come across or beings and who they may be. Four beings? Orb. O-R-B. Oh, orb. Orb beings. The orb beings are, they are different species that, um, you see, this is the way they travel in orbs. But listen carefully. There are spiritual orbs as well. I know that orb beings can be those of spirits of past lives. That is how they present themselves to humans sometimes. Let me give you an example of that. There was an organ in a church that had not been played in many years. And it was a beautiful and majestic sounding organ and it brought the sound of great power and energy to the people. And they could feel the spirit when the organist played this particular organ. But the church had been closed and there was no one playing this organ. A team was sent in to renovate the church and renovate the organ. And so therefore they came in and they did all these renovations. And a group of organists from the neighborhood heard about it and were interested in listening to this beautiful old organ because there are some that just have a great attraction to the sounds of it. And there are many people that do as well. But, so they went in and the church was beautiful and majestic and they started taking pictures. They started to take pictures around the church and they started taking pictures of the organ. And someone sat down and started to play the organ. And all of a sudden, in the pictures, hundreds of orbs appeared. Where were these orbs from? They were the spirits of the people who knew the sound of the organ. And the, they came back to listen. And they appeared in clear, beautiful orbs all around the church. You couldn't see them with the eye, but the photographs picked them up in great number. And only after the organ was played could they see this many beautiful orbs. But it was proven that the spirit of these people came back to listen. And that is a beautiful lesson because the spirit was part of that. He allowed them to come back in their little protective shells to listen to the sound of the great organ. Now, there are aliens that have organs, uh, organs, <laughs> have um, vessels that are also spheres, but they are different colors. They are of red and green and blue. And some of these are reptilian, some of them are of other species. The greys have triangle uh, uh, ships. The uh, Asasani also triangle ships because the greys are associated with them. Um, also with many, many other species, there are orbs. I could not name them, but they are the thing is, they sometimes travel in protective bubbles. They put uh, vibrational bubbles together and put a bubble around their ship and travel vibrationally. And then that can change. Uh, they, some people can see the bubble and not the ship. So that's another way to do it. Perfect. And, and there's a couple questions about orbs that are coming up in the chat. And also, um, Omran has a question about the orbs. So, Omran, why don't you ask your question? Hello, Elijah. I have a quick question about um, orbs. 
uh, a, f a few years ago, uh, I was uh, someone saw orbs coming out of my body, blue orbs, and when yeah, I was yeah. in the room, it cleared off the room from negative spirits. Um, yes, yes. But I never understood it why blue orbs came out of my body and around me, and, and it kind blue of orbs. left a mark wherever I went. So how how does it? come out of my body and what is it really these blue orbs you're a holder of spirit and you're a believer in great love and understanding you've been through a lot of hardships and you've been through a lot of great things but you've come through it successfully is this correct yes that is true yes and so therefore these are the orbs of the love that you have gained when when you went through these lessons you have gained these great spiritual understandings and as they come out of you they cleanse the room they are of god they are of spirit and they are of cleansing because you had to cleanse yourself of many different things for these things to be a part of you is that correct Yes, true, true, yes. And so do not question it. It is of God, and as it is His way of making you an example of His love. Uh -huh. Okay, I understand that. Very well. Thank you. And then there's another question pertaining to orbs that uh, uh, Kenny in the chat says, so what about metallic looking orbs? They're the size of a crow's wingspan and they're, they have a look of hematite, they're a hematite metallic uh, color. Those are not ships, but those are crows. They come to look at uh, certain things on earth. They come to check on cer certain humans at certain times but they are harmless. They are not there for uh, negative intentions. They are there to make sure things are intact. Some of them do studies and collect information from the earth and plants, animals and things of this nature, but they also are to check on certain humans because certain humans are of interest to some of these species. Now, this is a very common probe used by more than one species because it is a more galactic kind of an approach for understanding and uh, finding ways to learn about humanity. And it is safe, and they are permitted to do so, as long as they do not interact with anything that humanity or uh, humanity is doing. They are permitted to send these orbs. And not everyone can see them. They're not always in the third dimension. Sometimes they are in fourth dimension. And sometimes they are even in fifth dimension. But the fourth dimensional ones sometimes can be seen by those that have high fourth dimensional energies. All right, perfect. And then just switching gears, there was a question that's asked by Trinity, but also echoed by Michelle. Um, she wants to know, uh, please uh, ask the best way to truly achieve emotional forgiving so that it's real towards self and others and not just intellectual. And so that love can come in and, and when forgiving makes space. The first thing you must do for this to happen is cleanse. And you must ask God to come and cleanse out the negativity within you. You must ask God to bring forth his energy to, to make that a non-issue. Forgiveness is the next step. But first, you have to get rid of that feeling and, and love yourself and forgive yourself and bring that cleansing in. Cleanse yourself out and bring light in in its place. Cleanse yourself out of negativity, bring Holy Spirit, bring love, bring guidance, bring joy, bring light into the body. Bring that in first, and so that it washes things out. Now, if you truly can do that, if you can truly ask God to cleanse you, why wouldn't he? 
Why would there be anything left after you ask God to cleanse you out unless you're holding on to it? Do not hold on to it. Let it go. And then fill yourself with light. And then, as you know and feel that you are cleansed out, because your mind and heart will know, you may not feel anything. Do not go by feeling, but go by what you know to be true. Because sometimes you can know that you are cleansed out, but not feel anything at that particular moment. And why is that? Because God is doing something else there too. He's doing a little bit of work and a little bit of healing. So then after that, Say with your voice, I forgive them. Whatever it is that is making you feel that way or made you feel that way before the cleansing, I heal it. I forgive it. I'm letting it go. You may have to do that many times because sometimes the pain of what others have done is strong. But do it as often as you have to until it is truly gone. And it works. Use your light language if you need to help you to cleanse, to say the right words, to help you to purify. But at that moment, after you cleanse out, you can forgive. And then you can be sincere. And you can use your love. But you must know that there are ways to get rid of the negativity within you. But some people prefer to hold on to it. Please don't do that. Holding on to the negativity only holds you back. It's you that are punished and you that will suffer. Not anyone else. Oh, you'll cause other people to suffer if you hold in the negative energy. Oh, there's no question about that whatsoever. You will generate other negativity if you hold on to negativity. But in this time, this is a time that human beings must learn to purge and cleanse. It does not mean giving up things that you like to do. It does not mean, oh, I can't dance or play cards or drink beer. It's nothing to do with that. It's about the spirit and intention in which you do things. It's not about what you do, but the intention behind what you do. Is it love? Is it good? Will it connect you to other people? Will it bring harmony? Will it make you feel better and others feel better? Yes. Pray about it. Associate with it. Connect to it. You know what is right and wrong in your heart. You don't need a list of rules to tell you what's right and wrong. You already know what's right and wrong. To what is right and wrong. But if every man and woman were to say to themselves, I want to do a good intention for my life. I want good intention for my life. Do you know how much lives would change? A lot of you go, oh, everything I do is with good intention. You may, you may be someone that is a good intention person, and it may be sort of a natural thing even. But see how much stronger and much more powerful it will be to wake up in the morning and say, I want to live intentionally some kindness, a good example. 
not with words, but with actions and with kindness, with beauty, wisdom. Not that you have to be talking all the time and telling them how smart and wise you are because they'll see through that. But tell them how beautiful they are. Tell them how wonderful their presence is. Pull out all the best things in the people that you know so they will want to be even more beautiful. Ah, it's not always easy with some people. It's hard to find a beautiful thing in them sometimes. But find it. Find it. Thank you, Elijah. That's lovely. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I think there are others that are waiting to speak. Okay, perfect. What and I am sorry I took up so much time. I was only planning on a 15-minute visit, but I took more than that. But Well, there's no time uh, where you are. <laughs> so therefore, I will bring someone else. Okay, thank you. Much Blessing. love to you all. Much love to you. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste. I like that word. It means the spirit in me. And that is truly humility. And when you bow down to someone, it means you are in service. So what you're saying when you say namaste is, generally speaking, I humble myself and is in service to you as another human being. It's a beautiful and lovely gesture. Be well. Thank you. Thank Since you have called us, we are willing to speak. And whom are we speaking to? I am a representative of the Universal Council. You're welcome. Thank you. And do you have a name? We'll speak to a small group like this. But it is necessary in this case, I believe, because there are so many things happening with your planet and the solar system that is yours. We bring you great tidings of acceptance. We wish to only bring positive information, but although there is much negativity occurring, positivity can be found in many places still. We are here to perhaps answer what questions you may have about us. We feel that it is important that we make ourselves known. So therefore, ask your questions. We do not know exactly what to tell you about ourselves that would be most helpful. Thank you. Uh, Cher has a question. Yes. Greetings. Uh, I just heard about you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, thank you for coming. I know that you are pretty busy. 
the universe is a large place. And yes, we are very busy. I want to ask you something. I spoke with one of the L collectives, the L email. In the L email, the one about mental health. Yes. And actually, I understood from them that instead of the entire seven L collectives that are supposed to come here in a hundred and something years for the ascension, all of them are going to be here in 10 to 12 years, which is pretty amazing. They said it's the situation that was uh, why all of them are going to be here in such a short time. Can you maybe expand on that? Yes. They were given permission to come because this timeline that you are a part of, or the many timelines that echo from the center of this timeline, must exist. And they need to bring their healing energies to this area quickly. You are on the verge of a possible extinction, and we do not want to see that. So the L collectives will come with permission as long as they do not interfere with the prime directive as it's called by your people or understood most clearly by them. We have other words that we would call it, but that one seems to be most generally used. I see, and I want to ask you if you can tell something about the 23rd of September. What do you think that is going to happen? We are not here to predict your future. We are here to observe your peoples, and we are here to govern the universe in a way that would be fair. You are not part of any galactic councils at this time, and therefore, your jurisdiction is under your own galactic councils. Therefore, we speak to your galactic councils about you, and we know where you stand on many points of uh, government. We understand where your galactic government also is uh, working with you in some ways. The alignment on the 23rd of this month can be generally apocalyptic if that is what God desires. Now, the way that gravity moves is not well understood by the average human being. It works and can move similar to how light moves. Do you grasp that? That it can curve and bend, and it can be particle and matter at times. You have not discovered this, perhaps. But it is that it will be as it should be. And I do not want to make any predictions about what will happen because we are here to observe it and perhaps send our own version of help in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Homeran has a question. Thank you. Yes, yeah. he has a question. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello, Universal Council. It is great. great. It, it's great to meet you, speak to you. Yes. Um, yes. My question is, I feel something huge happened in astral or was, or was triggered to start something new. I don't know what that is. Could you maybe tell us if you are connected with that? Of course, we are not connected to it, but we see it. It is this alignment of planets, but it goes far beyond the alignment of planets. It's alignment of star systems. It's something that has not occurred for many thousands of years in, for your solar system. In fact, it might be unique to this solar system for the first time. 
the energies that will be coming from this alignment and from the alignment of star systems, especially Virgo, is rather significant. The constellation that is of your that you see from your angle. Does that answer right. your question? Okay. question? We cannot elaborate other than to tell you to study some of your old prophecies because it is there written exactly how it is and it is fairly precise as to how the alignment is yes i just thought it was strange for me to feel that a huge number of you, of entities you are in coming from a greater past a greater universal existence and so you are aware of the things that happen in the universe to some extent you always have been and always will be all right thank you very much and also are, is, is it true a lot of a huge number of entities in astral are moving toward something towards something yes, a yes. source of some kind okay great thank you there is there are many species and many entities as you call them moving and being directed toward this solar system at this time they are very interested in the way that things are happening in your timelines and in your solar system and even in your galaxy many things have changed and some things that were not foreseen are now being observed thank you very much um, thank you um angie has a question now uh, good day Good day. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask you a question about time and how how do you, how do you experience time? What we know of yeah. through the aliens, they always say it's now, but I do understand that there must be some kind of an alignment or some sort of cycles that you go through to experience these things. How do you experience them? we must put parameters on time so that we can organize ourselves mm -hmm. it is only for organizational purposes you see time does not really exist in what you might call a reality until you put it into uh, parameters and give it a reality mm -hmm. now that may be hard for some to exist but space is a reality. Distance is a reality. But time does not exist except with creating different parameters. Your planet has created a 24-hour day, which is your perspective of time. We have a quite different perspective. Galactic days, galactic years, universal days and universal years can be perceived by some species in very different ways. But as we come together as a collective, we must have a parameter set that all can adhere to so that we may all be in the same place at the same time. So therefore, we will put universal parameters on things, the way that the sky is set from different angles, from different planets, from different solar systems, from different galaxies. So therefore, when we set down our parameters, we give them access to the thought processes that are used for these algorithms and for these time settings. We do not expect everyone to use these on their own planet because they have already create, created 
their own parameters within their own space and elemental realities. Therefore, when the Universal Council convenes, we use our own parameters and all species must be in tune with this so that we may meet at once. That sounds uh, interesting. Um, it w Would that be possible to learn it at some stage in our life? So, because we're becoming uh, more galactic. Um, yes, uh, it could be the algorithm of it could be taught to you, but the perception of it cannot, because where we meet, you cannot be there to see what the sky looks like from that place. Meaning right. that you are on Earth and you see your sky in a certain way. It, you have mapped it out by constellations and things of this nature, by galactic areas and thoughts. Where we meet in the center of the universe, you have no perception of what the stars are looking like in sequence from there. So therefore, we have to use that parameter, those parameters for the basis of our algorithm. We may teach you that algorithm and those, the time sequences, but it would not be possible to learn them until you can see them from the right angles. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think I understand it to some degree. Be yes. perceivable probably in, an, in a different uh, dimension or density, higher, uh, higher up, right? It's a combination of densities that we uh -huh. must work with because the species in the Universal Council are from all dimensions. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. That, that was interesting. Very well. Thank you. Greetings again. Um, Greetings. This, <laughs> this is Christine. Um, it occurred to me with all these different happenings that are going on, which I wasn't aware of. I'm busy with my own little life here. Um, there is um, Trump and Pence and Paul Ryan, these people who are supposed to be steering the United States towards something good, I hope. Um, are they aware of all these things that are happening? Is that why there's so much, such a big mess with them trying to, uh, which they refuse to? I understand they're too busy with the two hurricanes. Um, are they aware of this? Is this, is this why they're so messed up? They, they are aware of what they want to be aware of. They are not aware of all galactic things except for their sciences. They choose to ignore many things that are brought to them because it does not interest them or it is not part of the immediate awareness of what they feel that they need to do. Now, these things that they are aware of uh, have different priorities than you might think. The universe is a tiny priority when it comes to running a world or being part of a world because, as you see, humans as a whole, individually, have limited points of view and cannot usually see the big picture, as you call it, at any one particular time unless they do introspection and then bring it out into the fullness of understanding. Introspection must be done to understand the individual before they can put themselves into the picture that is true about what is happening around them. You understand that? 
unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, um, in October, that's supposed to be the next meeting. Am I correct? Or um, you were breaking up. Would you please repeat the question? Is um, October when the next galactic meeting with world leaders going to take place? They had. You mean with Gurkfrick Near and your world? Yes. It is supposed to happen around then, but with all the things that are happening in your particular world, all things have been postponed. Ah, I was wondering if Trump was going to take his daughter with him, or if his daughter, does his family know about the Galactic Committee or his planet? They know some things, but do not know all things. They are kept away from the more interesting particulars of galactic councils because he wants them to be focused on their particular jobs in third dimension. Yes. They are not privy to all the information that he has and would not even want them to be. I'm hoping there's a lot of soul growth going on here, which I'm sure. Another what? I'm hoping there's going to, I'm hoping for everyone concerned that there's a lot of soul growth going on. Here. I you know, see. For, yes. Um, I, cannot, I cannot speak about that at this time. Thank you but very much. But let me tell you this. The view from okay. the Universal Council is dire at this time. It would appear that there are many, many too many things happening at once. Yes, yes, only God. This is because of the workings of humanity more than anything else. There are great galactic energies. There are motions of your Earth within itself to purge itself, but humanity itself is working against itself. Hmm. And thus Gaia is stepping in, perhaps. I cannot comment on that. Okay, thank you. Blessed be. Blessed be. Okay, thank you. Temple has a question. Hi, um, my question is, can you elaborate on some of the recent manipulations of the various types of light workers that seem to be appearing? Um, I'm not really understanding it. I understand the free will, but like my count is somewhere around eight and that's just in my small, my small world. So I think something's happening and I'm not really sure what's going on. Your count is eight, please explain. Um, the, just the number of people that I know or that I follow that have had some sort of manipulation on their belief system where in the past they were helping many and now they, they feel like either they were wrong to do so or that their previous belief is no longer existent and they, they fall back. And I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to understand what's happening because it's not just one it seems like there's many thank you there is much negativity in your on your planet and those that have great missions are being turned away because they are being deceived by what they believe are intellectual truths spiritual truths are much more permanent and positive but they have intellectualized and seem to have a following that wants to hear about negative or intellectual things and not spiritual things as much. They, these spiritual things they are afraid of. I do not know why. But yes, there are many being pointed in different directions. But they will be awakened. Fear not. They will have to come back in order for their missions to be completed. Okay. Um, thank you. So it's it's not something or some energy. Well, yeah. It's 
their their mm-hmm. own selves and what the the masses that follow them are the conflicting yes energies. they want to be popular <laughs> okay excellent thank you very much thank you that is part of I could go on and tell you many things that are happening. The negativity deals with each one in their own particular way. They all have weaknesses, and the negativity knows what they are and deals with them in their most vulnerable place. Okay. I would love to know more, but I will let somebody else answer a question or ask a question. Thank there is much to say about that, and it is a difficult answer because it is so multifaceted sure thank you can i say something okay. yes this there is a, a person here to say something we as light workers can treat this as a call for community and by banding together by talking with other like-minded individuals by helping our fellow light workers come together this is how we show unity in community. This is how we overcome the darkness. This is how we show other people how to be the light, which shows that these difficulties that we are having are things that all of us that can overcome. Interestingly said, yes, it is the same with the Universal Council. We hold light for one another, even during the times when there are wars in some spaces of the galaxies in the universe. We try to hold light as much as possible for each species. It is not always easy, but it is necessary for us to come together as a universal council. Even though we may not all agree in some fashions about the way things should be handled. We agree that the spirit must be in charge. Thank you. Um, Marlene has a question. Yes, sir. Greetings. Greetings. I would like to address Saturn. Uh, we know that Saturn has had a lot of, or has had focus on Earth through time and still has. And my question is, how and what is their impact and their influence on the turmoil happening on our beautiful planet at this time? All the planets have some impact, as you know because of their different gravitational pulls and their distance from the sun and the earth and from one another. Also, the asteroid belt. All things have a degree of manipulation on what happens to in other places. You call this horoscope or something of that nature. We do measure these energies, distances, and mathematical equations. Remember this, Saturn is quite large. Its gravitational pull does have effect on the Earth. And now, during the alignment with Jupiter, two very, very large planets, and Uranus as well, they are going to have gravitational effects on the sun and on the earth. I am not sure what you want me to say. I will not tell you the future of this, but I can tell you that with these great gravitational pools and the way that gravitational can move, gravity can move, there could be huge consequences without the help of some outside forces. Thank you. Also. How about the rings of Saturn? And what would you have me say about them? They are crystallized ice for the most part and different kinds of chemical makeups. 
That is why the colors may change. But they are there for a purpose, and they do affect part of what happens. There are some planets within the rings. Are you aware of this? Yes. These planets have life, or at least one of them that we know of. Do the rings, the number of rings, or have the number of rings increased recently? Yes. But it is not a concern of ours at this point. It will affect Earth, but we just do our studies as they come. These things happen all over the universe. Changes occur, and they will always occur. And we are not surprised anymore about these kinds of changes. Some chemical reactions have happened, and some gravitational things have made changes in the rings of Saturn. So therefore, it is purely scientific to us. Yes, I understand. Thank you. We are not seeing that it is actually a direct part of any kind of prophecy or insight to cause any changes on your planet. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I know that that information is not the same as what you heard, but remember, we are from a greater picture. We are from the universe. Some may see it differently. Yes, of course, but uh, as long as we all come together to agree on the larger plane. Yes, on the larger plane, things will be agreeable. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for that question. I found it very interesting because I can see in your thought process there are some things that you think that might affect the planet. Yes, you have read me well. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, how are you doing? you have time for more questions or do you plan to stay for a little while? To you. We are here by your request. We will leave. No, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> okay, I will, David has a question and then Shir. Hello. Yes. Um, I'm interested in, in what way can I help with my, my abilities. I'm wondering about, I don't fully understand. I was, uh, I was taken at one point and something happened to prevent me from using my abilities. So I'm just wondering if you could give me a better understanding of, of, what kind of things that I can do with my healing? There, there are others, just as you, that have been taken and had their abilities stifled. But this is your answer. The ability to return to full awareness and to full usefulness in your mission will bring you to even a higher place than where you were originally because of the things that you must go through. The strength that you must have to bring yourself through this will bring you to a higher place in the mission, a higher place in the in standing. Communication with your peoples. So do not be frightened, but pull yourself up and let yourself know that if you clear out and and understand that you are as, as good as you once were and bring your thought processes back into line with positive thinking and positive uh, stimulation, you will then again be where you were and beyond. Okay. And... Um... I was, how about working with the grid lines? Is, is there, are you, the are you able to? Always use your help. 
how, how would I do that? I'm not sure how to do that. Will be most appreciated, I am sure. <coughs> Grid lines on all planets always need energy. And and how do I how do I do that? I haven't been told how to how to help do that. Just do it. You don't need to be told how to send energy. Just send energy to where you, your brain will send energy, your hands will send energy. If they are intentioned for the grid lines to receive them, they will receive them. You do not need to know where they are. You do not need to know what they look like. You do not need a lesson on how to send energy. You already know how to do that. They will receive them by intention. Yes, very good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Shira has a question. Shira. Greetings again. Um, Greetings. I want to have your opinion about something that I thought about. If the Earth is going to be destroyed by different things because of North Korea or the, st uh, the stuff that, that are going on around the world, I think that the politicians, the higher up, do have their own back plans how to get away from the planet and stuff like that. My question is this, if we are going to be destroyed because of the politicians and once they leave Earth, are they, let's say, up for grab? Is the, the galactic crews are going to keep them safe or they will be captured by the alliances? There are many backup plans for your planet. We are praying that none of them need to go into effect. We pray that you, as a species, will come to your senses. And at this point, that is not happening, but you still have a time before there is an elimination of humanity on your planet. So therefore, you do have some time to work with. But it is not a great deal of time. And so therefore, we are hoping that the thoughts and prayers of many in the universe and on your own planet will become evident to the leadership. Remember, it is your planet, and you must take care of it. We are not the servants of your world necessarily. We must be fair and help you with whatever we can, but we cannot save you from yourselves. My question is if they're going to have the same fate as the rest of us, because if they will understand that humanity will not survive means they will not survive, I think they will try to help us in order to help themselves, if you understand what I'm speaking about. Well, with all the great energies that are coming to pass at this time, it would appear that they are limited in their escape routes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, there's a question in the chat in, in, uh, about contact, um, about when that there's many be, there's many beings that say it'll be in 2018 or 2030, and they would like to know just on your opinion, when will this take place? No one can say the exact time, because what I understand from your Galactic Council of your Milky Way is that there are certain situations and certain agreements that must be upheld before anyone can make first contact with your species. Your governments must be in alignment in some ways, at least a great percentage of them. Also, who, no one wants to make contact at this time when there are so many weapons pointed into space and so many threats even to yourselves, one to another. This is not the time for us to come, or for anyone. But your time, hopefully, will show that your leadership will come to its senses in some way.
But as we see what is happening, I have had you stop there because I was about to say something that was not helpful. But let me say this that will be helpful. You must all hold the light for your leadership. Your leadership is the key. Thank you. Um, there's also a question, and it's it's a question that's been asked and answered many times, but um, about the fact that there's this belief that Earth is, everyone is focused on Earth, and that we're sort of, everyone, all the beings are focused focused on us. Is that actually so, or is it just in this time we're quite interesting? But I, I can't imagine that there's not other worlds that are also evolving in such a way waiting for... The difference is this. There are quite a few with the different alignments that are happening, the different energies, the, the apparent changes in your sun, the uh, li timelines overlapping. Many things are very unique in this area. At, the at this time, and that is why there are many there. But the other thing that is unique is the way that you are hybridized and what effect that can have on the galaxy. All right, thank you so very much. I, are there any other questions in the chat? Because I, I don't see them, if there are. Very well. Perhaps it is time for us to go. It was good to introduce ourselves to you, and we are happy to have made your acquaintance. We hope that this will not be our last time to visit with you, but remember this, you must first be part of the galaxy before you then become part of the Universal Council. The Universal Council is very diverse and very unique. Therefore, that is all I will say for now. We wish you all the best. We are sending energies, and some of the species, or I should say many of the species that are part of the Universal Council, also are known to you. There does seem to be one more question that, that I missed. So, um, Laini has a question. If we can just stop you from leaving for one second. One moment, I will stay. Thank you. Hello. Greetings. Greetings to you. Um, yeah, I was really interested to know, um, with the planetary alignment on the 23rd of September, has anyone um, done some kind of simulation to see what could happen with the planetary alignment? Relations, but you do not know the uh, the exact gravitational pulls that alignment will not be exact, but will it will be close to exact at some point. Now they would have to make all the relative changes to know exactly what the force will be that they are dealing with, and they. They cannot do it. They do not have that kind of information available to them. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. If they do have similar information, they have approximations, and they are fairly good approximations, but actual uh, numbers are not available, and actual... Uh, um, interactions are not available because they've never experienced this before and therefore they are unaware of some of the effects that could happen so they cannot see them in advance. Thank you so very much. And there are some additional questions that have just come up now if you, if you don't mind. Please. Yes. We seem to not want you to leave. <laughs> uh, Pete has I'm a question concerning that he was staying at his family's house and his mother heard singing throughout the entire night. He wanted to know if that is his, uh, his, his wife uh, from another galaxy and did she have any, was it a message for him? Let me see if we can 
can I attach to that female that heard the singing? I'm not sure. Who is it? The female ah, is Pete's me. mother. I can attach through him. One moment. Okay. Her homeland, yes. His wife is deceased. It was her, but she is not alone. Okay. She has brought angels and half whores with her. They just want everyone to know that she is fine, but there is something more. There is a message for him, and this is what it is. His energies are being affected by those that are around him in the fourth dimension. And his fourth dimensional energies are getting stronger, but he is still not happy with the way things are i i truly understand what he means but let him discover that they are bringing him to a greater fullness a greater positivity a greater edification and that he will be stronger and there will be someone else there for him okay perfect and then there's a question from the chat asking if, if it's possible to join your council, is it a is that a joinable thing or are you a are you a group of I was in you must clear. first belong to the Galactic Federation because the Galactic Federation in all galaxies are connected to the universal groups and therefore your planet has not made a galactic connection at this time. You personally may join us in the We are meeting or when the Galactic Federation is moving that direction we welcome individuals you may not remember everything it is on so many levels that it is very difficult for an astral being to comprehend what is going on but we will actually welcome you if you want to join Thank you very much. Marlene has a question. Yes. Greetings again. I would like to ask you about the frequency band. Uh, as we know that often uh, humanity and planet is, is manipulated on a negative basis and uh, makes things occur. How can the, uh, uh, the enlightened beings on the planet help and uh, shift the existing frequency band created at this particular time? Through their positivity and connecting of the light workers together. Remember, each of you is a light. You hold light for one another. Remember to connect yourselves daily, to bring the, gr the grid of light. Even those that are in negativity have the light of God within them. And if you connect that, it weakens their power. So remember to continually connect all the, the bands of light, all the frequencies together. Now, let me add something else to this. I do not think of the same bandwidth that you do, and I understand that. That is fine. You are studying in different terms than I, than I do, but yet the information is similar but spoken in a different way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Therefore, let me tell you this. What you call the cabal, or what you call the, the most powerful people on your planet, are the greatest form of your negativity because they are in control. They have found a way to control the planet through the weather, through uh, the money, and through the manipulations. Uh, but AI, artificial intelligence, are also nearby, bringing chaos and uh, non-symmetrical thought process to the human being controlled by AI, which is very distant, yet very powerful. Are you aware of this? 
Yes, very well. And, and when I was asking the question, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, is what came on, was on top of my mind. So I exactly. thank you for addressing so you are correct. Your thought process says I can read very easily. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, yes, because we are on similar frequencies as far as intellectual thought process. You are high intellect and you have many things to offer your species. But you are also, we can also can. I'm sorry, uh, the, the, your information was cut. I did not hear the, la the, the last part of what you said, I'm sorry. I said we can connect mentally because we are on similar frequencies. Yes, thank you. Concretely, how can we, um, I know that collectively we come together and all, but concretely, how can we counteract at our level? You must intention it, you must believe it, and you must act on it. Many people do not know how to act on it, and it's as simple as uh, making your light as bright as possible and bringing others uh, into that light as quickly as possible and letting their light shine. You see, when you rise up as a bright light, you bring others around you up with you. Do you understand that? Yeah. It is a matter of science, but also of spirit. Yes, I understand. So there um, is no formula that can break through greater than spirituality, positivity, and the intention of moving forward in a positive way. Is there any other way that you can see to defeat them? They are only humans to begin with. How do grids... Um, they can strengthen you. Use your grids. Intend that your grids help you and empower them. Intend that Mother Earth empowers you. Intend that air and water empower you. Intend that moon and sun empower you. Bring all positive elements into your manipulation as a human being. It is part of your belief system that is not a very well known that you are in control of all things. Absolutely. Um, if you can, yes, yes, you were to say something? I just want to say that I can speak to you that way because you can comprehend it on a level that will be useful. Yes, thank you so, so, so very much. I appreciate it. And uh, also, if I can ask you to add me to your list for the next meeting. Which next will be soon. Meeting. We are okay. planning to meet soon. There are already those from distant galaxies on their way to the center of the universe. Some part of my group? Perhaps. Well, can I be included? I already included you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I, I need to clarify from the chat. Trinity was the one asking the question about joining the council, and she would like you to personally know that she would like to join the council, if that's very possible. Well. Very good. I um, understand. I would like also to volunteer, if it's you possible. You are already permitted by your father ah okay thank you there are several humans that do come or attempt to come they do not always understand it always but they are welcome thank you there's some questions about ai intelligence if they can achieve uh uh, true consciousness, if you have a comment on that. AI are 
they have gained many things over the centuries. They have plasma of different types that will seep into their beings. They will become sentient in a different way than most beings become sentient because it's from osmosis and not from um, organic beginnings. Does that make sense to you? Uh, to me, yes, but the, the question was from Krelik. So, but I think he understands as well. As well, within the next 200 years, become sentient and start to understand the need for emotion and uh, how it can help with decision making and manipulation. So they will eventually be a little more dangerous. But in some ways, they will actually start to care about things in a different way. Now, we do not know exactly how this osmosis effect will affect them. They could become worse or better. We are praying that it makes them better. And we are sending energies of positivities to them always. But right now, they react in a chaotic and non-symmetrical intelligent form because that way it keeps them it keeps their signals unidentifiable and helps them manipulate in a way that none others no other species can most species use organizational thought for manipulation theirs is from chaos and and changing thought patterns so that they may in affect or infect a species. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Temple has a question. Yeah. Um, thank you. I sitting here just listening. I got really woozy and like my throat chakra started closing and stuff. And so I just feel really like I have to ask: Is there a message for me, or is something coming through? Thank you for you and the throat being the communication chakra it is one that someone wants to speak to you but it was not from me but there is an important uh message to be relayed one moment please and let me see if i can attach to that entity yes you are going to be stronger but there is you have come through a great deal of difficulty recently and they want you to speak about it to help other people does that make any sense to you um it does and it doesn't because i was told that i should not speak about certain things so i get confused as to what i'm allowed to speak about and what i should not speak about they are saying the time is coming shortly that you must speak because it will help others. But the time was not yet. It is not quite yet. And they're, they're saying that this information, they did not want you to speak because it would be misunderstood. But there will be coming a time soon that it will be very understood. Okay. And then I just have one quick question. Um, can it, Will they allow me or is it in my best interest to like dig deeper into the these frequency issues that a lot of the um, light workers are having and talk about them because I feel like I need to talk about these issues that are going on why so many are having problems and dropping out and speaking speak to them in love speak to them in unity speak to them about uh, where their heart is and why they want to move away because those that are moving away are not using unconditional love they are using the hurt to move away they are using the negativity to plant blame and to point fingers let them use their unconditional love to actually see the whole picture and what is happening show them that the whole picture is that negativity wants to destroy community okay thank you Thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's, how are you doing? For, we're, we're coming up on the end of time. How are you doing 
for staying? How do you feel about staying or going? Are you I'm there? I'm thinking about just connecting. Okay. Okay. We started a little late, so but we can we can go for a little longer or, or stop at any time. It's, if you it's wish me to stay, is there another question? There were, there was, let me just double check a moment. And the comments are that people would like to talk to you more in the future if you would be willing to come back. So, let me I just I am check. willing to come back. Thank you. And I can stay for a, a few more questions if that is what they would require. Okay. Um, I, I'm looking quickly. I just want to make sure that I didn't miss any questions. I think that we're okay. I think that we're okay. So. There is an energy group that is coming into this area, and I am now pushing them out. It is all right. Everything is fine. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You are detecting it as well. Yes. And you are detecting it as well. Yes, and I am. They are being hold, held by those that detect it within the room. You want to lead us in an energy work to help us move whatever that is? It is done. Okay, thank you. The energy work was done. Thank you. What is the next question? I don't have any questions right now, but uh, people are asking for a blessing. Uh, there is a question in Oh, and a question in the room. Thank you. you spoke, come closer. You spoke of how um, light energy bends and that gravity energy bends as well how is that going to affect the earth as gravity energy bends it will pull the energy into your energy because you are in part of the front of the group of the alignment does that make sense it will pull the gravitational energy into your gravitational energy you are in you are in the more front portion of the alignment, and behind you are giant planets. Uranus is giant, Jupiter is giant, and Saturn is giant. And it's, yes, I'm being told that it's pronounced Uranus. <laughs> I mean, psychically, I was told it's spoken Uranus. That was some nice comic relief there for us. They find some humor within that, but I am not sure exactly why. But that is all right. We must move forward. Time is of the essence. Thank you. And then David does have a question. David. Okay. Head to unmute. Yes, um, I'm, I was curious about any kind of guidance. I was also, like Temple, um, told that it would be good to speak to people to be able to help them with experiences that I went through, um, to be able to help them. In what ways would I get out to speak to people would it be like in person or a book or what do you recommend to you share can do it one on one right now you see it may help people and they will talk amongst themselves about your experience and some may come to you personally because they have something that they need to ask you so don't worry about speaking in front of groups of people at this time all things all missions start out small and grow to the size that they are meant to be with your own permission to grow and with God's permission to feed and nourish you in the spirit. Okay, good. So I'm doing that, great. That is fine. 
start off the way you start off, but be positive, informative, and speak with humility. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Much love. And Don has a question. Don. I do not hear him. I think he's trying. I will wait. Don, do you have the ability to speak? Do you have any questions? Or, sorry. Do you have any information for me at this time? Yes, you are doing some great work at this time. I connect to you very well also. You're of a high energy and high frequency. Continue to move forward. Purify all those things that may seem to be cluttered. And you, your thought processes will come in greater alignment even than they are now. You are of a positive entity and your work is strong. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that answer. Blessings. You are welcome. I think we've reached the end of our questions now. Excellent, because they are telling me that it is time to go. Thank you. Would you like to I, leave us with a blessing? I will leave you with a universal council blessing. One, that, one of many that we speak one to another. Because remember, we have several different species within our existence, our realms, and sometimes you need a most specific prayer for everyone to become a part of it. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. And there are hand motions that go with it, because there are some that have no interpreters, no translators, but they have learned the galactic language through the hand gestures. Let me see if I can say it in English. Welcome to all and blessings in the paths of all greater solar systems and galaxies around the universe. We bring you greetings and love and prayers, and we bring you the light within us to share. Now that we are gathered, we may communicate the things of the heart, of the mind, and of the intellect. Remembering that all things are important one to another and that we commune in peace and spirit and love one for another. The council gathers and prays for all beings, no matter if they are part or not of this universal gathering. Let it be known that we are here and if there is help that is necessary to be given, we will call on you for your agreements and to help in whatever way is possible within universal laws. Much love at all times given to the fact that you are a member, you are a heartfelt person to us. Keep us in your heart as well. Break forth into your own intellectual process, but remember to uplift us all at once. Ara and Zunj. And get you our cats. And that is to say.
love through eternity and God for unification in the spirit of all that exists. Let our energies unite formidably. Much love. Much love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaste to you. Namaste. Hello? Hello. Hello. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It was lovely. Oh, good. <laughs> I hope everybody is okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. We met a very nice new uh, energy, the uh, Universal Council. And they brought a lot of information. So I'm this assuming it's a they because if we d I don't know if we were speaking with an individual or a group collective. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was very nice interaction. So. All right. Very good. Do Is we want any, to? Yeah, go ahead. Anybody want? Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say what you're going to say, so you say it. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, for a blessing. Or what did you, were you going to say? The same. <laughs> All right. It, we could use a blessing for the ending if anyone wants to do one. I can do oh. one. Oh. <laughs> okay, and there's one in the room also. Okay. Shukutaya aya kohia na tika oya ta aya kota na kia la kahia ta aya kato to taya na shiki ti ta aya ko aya na hika oya la kapa aya to na shi puka aya o ni ti hika aya na ta ala ko oya to no shiki i na ta aya o to to kia na ti puka aya ma ti oya na sha ku a aya na ti hika na ta aya po ya na ta i mo shiki tu na aya na ta ha. Remember that we are all of the light and all have the same essence and that we can commune one to another even though you may see some as unapproachable or unlikable. Remember to extend your hand no matter what and to love those even that are unlovable and to bring all light as possible into the situation no matter how dark it may seem. You are the people of the future, the hope of mankind. Remember to use all that is within you for good and for to prosper your species. Thank you, and the blessing in the room. And there's one here, Angela. Javu au janari su au tsa avi zidu atni wazitia ivu wazin du wazi du wazi ti du wazza ni javu du wazi ti du wazza zavietwa ni du wazu wazi vu javu wazi ti ya ni adu du wazi ti ti du wazi ni ti ti du wazi ni adu du du wazza zietuti. Connect together all your light so that it might be bright. Let the earth look like a, a ball of fire. At this time, it is getting brighter, but it needs to get brighter even still. There are many things that we need to do within ourselves to make it a better world, because it is that we improve ourselves to improve all beings. Thank you very much. Oh, very good. <laughs> so thank you very much. Just to remind everybody, this is uh, Human Colony. It's been the Saturday webinar with, uh, with Jim Charles. And if you would like to in the future, we had a lot of questions coming from the chat on the YouTube. If you would like to be able to be in the room, then you can go to hukalo.org and you can join our uh, 
we our, our paid our paid subscription. It's ten dollars a month, and and it guarantees you uh, access to the room. And there were so many questions. It was good we opened it up to everyone today. So, but just for the future, if you want to be part of it, make sure you make sure sure you take the subscription. So, and if you want to stay watching on YouTube, it's okay. But hukula.org. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And have a wonderful day, everybody. Good to see you. I hope you had a good session today. And that was, um, it seemed like a long one. <laughs> well, we started a little late, but we actually uh, went straight two hours. So. Okay. Very good. Yeah, you know, Much so, love to everyone. And I will talk to you later. Okay, thank you. Much love to you. Thank you, Jim. Namaste. Oh, Jim. Everyone. Thank you very much, Karen. Bye, love it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 I love you. Love bye. you. Bye in the room of Jim. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>